Hello ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages. I present to you a PBL Robots card and dice game demo. So what we're going to be doing is talking all about PBL Robots, a game I invented with John Sapinski in 2015. Um, we're going to be talking about what the game is, how to play it, um, and kind of doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we're gonna, we, I'm going to be giving out a coupon code that you can use on um, the website www.robotcardgame.com also a great resource if you want to see what these cards look like you can see the whole collection of the cards right there on on the website you can also see some gameplay videos how to play that kind of thing so that's a great resource it's also great to do that while you're watching this because if you have any other questions or want to see more cards i'm only going to be showing you a few cards here as we go because but there's a whole bunch more um, of every little piece and there's just a lot to look at. Um, if you are interested in strategy games, especially head-to-head, -head, really intense strategy games, um, collectible card game kind of battles, if you like risk roll um, gameplay with rolling of the dice, um, if you like robots and big explosions, um, this is a game that you should definitely check out and and see if it's something you're interested in. So I'm super excited to be doing that. And then we're going to be doing a drawing for the first ever foil base robots. So you actually see the three base robots right here. Um, those are the ones that come with the game. I have uh, um, constructed three foil versions, one of each um, so far. So um, I'm going to be just giving out one. So whoever wins the um, the the drawing today. Um, anybody that leaves a comment, I'm going to be, so I'm going to have one on the YouTube video when this is done. I'm going to post the YouTube video and anybody that leaves a comment in, you know, a 30 day period, um, will be entered into a contest. And same with this Twitch live stream. If you leave a comment now, um, or, uh, put something in the chat, you're, you will be also entered to win one of the foil, um, the foil based robots. And I'll show you those right now. Hello, Megan. Welcome. Welcome. So, this is the first ever foil based robots that will be given away. Um, so check it out. So I want to see if you can be, even be able to tell. Unfortunately, the foiling is very difficult to pick up on the stream. Um, but essentially they're, they're, um, one off versions of the robots you see above. They actually have some really good foiling, but it really doesn't come across on, let's see if you can, oh, there you can kind of see it. You know, I, have to, I almost have to lay it sideways to get the effect, but check it out. So the, those are available. So whoever wins the, the contest here on um, the Twitch, hey, Josh, what's up? Squat, <laughs> squat trick. Welcome, welcome, good to see you. Yeah, so we got the PBL Robots uh, specialty foil cards. Um, whoever wins in this um, drawing will get to pick their favorite of the three, and then whoever wins in the drawing at the um, on the YouTube um, comments. So if, if if you are watching this on YouTube, leave the comment below, um, and you will be entered to win that another one of the other the two remaining. Um, and I'll think of some way to give out um, a prize for the third remaining. Okay, so what is PBL Robots? And oh, before I even start, I do want to shout out um, Dorian, who uh, kind of motivated me to get something up on Twitch, um, PBL Robots related. Because I was telling, you know, I was just telling her how it's weird how you have chunks of your life of like projects, and how like I really need to be giving some attention back to PBL Robots. And this is a great opportunity, and I should be doing more with it. Um, and I just haven't, you know, I kind of you you kind of work on your next project, and you kind of forget to do that. And Megan, thank you with the um, subscription. Thank you. Three month streak. Awesome. Thank you for that. Okay, so um, PBL Robots essentially is a futuristic um, sport in the sky. So these giant robots that you're actually seeing on the board, um, right on the screen, are actually a hundred foot robots. Um, these are the three base robots that you get to choose from when you want when you're going about to start a battle. And essentially, it's a um, at least most of the time, it's a one-on-one -on -one, um, boxing match, match, essentially, in the sky. And so the robots, they actually do have pilots, like a mech would, um, but they, they do work, you know, independently, but you have, a ro you have a pilot in there to kind of do additional things um, and add additional stats. So it's kind of like a 
driving a automated car, but you still like have some, you can do extra things while you're inside it. Um, so when, when you are playing PBL robots, essentially you're like the owner of this 100 foot robot. So you aren't necessarily the one driving it. Um, you get to uh, draft a pilot and you get to draft a, a team of crew and you get to have hangers and build armor onto your robot. And you kind of build it as you go. So first thing I'm gonna do is I just wanna show you kind of the core mechanics of building your robot and how that kind of works. So you've got your three robots here. So let's say we select solar robot. Um, that's the first choice you make. Um, so we'll get rid of the other two. So now we have solar robot. That's our robot that we're gonna be battling with. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a, uh, a pilot. Now there's a couple different ways this can happen, but there's 10 different pilots. They, they ba have all similar base stats. They're either an aggressive pilot or a, or a defensive pilot, um, but they all have some bonus specialties. So we're going to select Mercy Dufresne here. Um, she is uh, all the stats that you see, the zero, the zero or the red and the blue numbers. Red um, indicates your attack dice and blue indicates your defense dice. So there's a lot of information on this card. The only thing you're really looking at is the middle stats. Um, up in the top corner is the critical form. All pilots go into a critical form at the end of the game. Um, so it's important to note that, especially as you play more games that will become very critical. Um, no pun intended. Um, in For the game. And I'll kind of show you how that works here in one sec. So once you select your pilot, you go ahead and here, I'm going to put her right there. And you put your robot over the top. And look, she's sitting right inside there. If I can actually, let me make it the right size. Mercy. There we go. There, Mercy is sitting in your, in your robot. She's still a little bit big here. There we go. Um... So what we have is your 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 uh, pilot now riding your robot, and um, I get it right. I feel like it's still just too big. I'm trying to get it to look exactly like how it looks when you're in the actual game. Um, so I want it to be like the exact right size. Um, Cause they, you know, and I have a box right here of, uh, you know, I have a box of the actual game. You got your little control panels that come with it and I'll kind of do an unboxing of what you get. So after I do this kind of like uh, basic showing you what it looks like um, and how it kind of works, then I'll kind of walk you through uh, what comes in a game and all of that stuff. Okay. So you put your pilot into your robot. That's your pilot for most of the game and maybe the whole game. Um, and she sits in there and she gives that boost of a zero attack and two defense to all limbs of your robot. You notice you have a head. Um, hey, what's up, Adam? One of our champions, String Cheese Riot. Um, we we hold, hold championships for PBL robots and he is one of them. You, a major championship at SnowCon in, in, in Maine. So... Uh, Pretty honored to have him in the live stream. Welcome, welcome. Hey, and the subscription. Thank you, String Cheese Riot. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate that very much. You have a championship pin coming to you, by the way, um, but we are waiting to do a ceremony of some kind because um, we don't just want to send them unceremoniously. So we have it. It's ready for you. We just have to work, figure out how we're going to do it. And we've been waiting, obviously, with the pandemic. We've been waiting for that to finish up. Um, but it's coming. It's ready for you. Okay. Um, so what we've got here is your, your head armor and your left arm, right arm, feet. Um, all of those things on the robot have, they have a separate attack and defense and they're individual limbs that you need to blow off to win the game. So, um, what I'm going to show you first is building armor. So you've, you've had, you have your, you picked your uh, robot, you got your pilot sitting in your robot. Now, um, you during the game, you will be drafting and playing armor. So there's a draft phase, um, which you will be doing to build your team and your resources. And then during the game, you can do something on your turn, like play armor and build up your the strength of your robot. Now, you also can attack on your turn, um, and I'll explain that later. But one thing that's really good to do is to build up and make your robot stronger. So you can notice that Swan's Beak is an, a, is an attack 
um, offensive uh, body part, and it's a, a level one. So all the parts of the robot starts as a, as a level zero, and you kind of build up as you go. Um, so now you'll see multi-fire arm. So this one actually is a five attack, two defense. So its attack is strong, um, but there is a caveat you'll see in the orange box. Fives and sixes do not count with this armor uh, when you roll it. So um, four attack. So you have to be careful about that because you could five attack seems like a lot when you're rolling dice. Um, each number represents a die you roll as well. It's not just like five damage, it's five dice. So you could roll, you know, very high or you could vo roll very low. And that's where, you know, the variance comes in. Um, and luck does play a big part of that. And it does give you two extra defense for, for that armor. So now you're at a level two arm. So you, you could, you can't put this armor on if you don't have a, a level one first. So you have to be careful about building up your armor and pay attention to what you've got in your deck so you can build it up correctly. Um, and then we got a level three gem blaster con. So it's pretty, pretty powerful. Six attack. Every time you attack with it, uh, it goes, it gets a little less. So it starts out really powerful. You can do a lot of damage, try to blow up your opponent's robot before it kind of runs out of juice. So a pretty, pretty strong one there. That's a level three. All the level three armors are pretty strong. Um, so what you want to do is get up to level three before your opponent does, um, and, and try to use that successfully. Cause you have to be careful. If you build up to level three and the next turn they blow it up and you never even get to use it, that can be, a, you know, a downside as well for sure. So you have to be careful with the strategy and strategy is super important in the game. All right, now let's say you, there's also armor for every part of the robot. You got leg armor, you got both arm armors, and they're specific left and right armors. And then you've got head armor. Um, there's a hundred total cards. Um, so there's a lot of variance between what kind your deck might look like from game to game. So there's a level one head. Here is a level two head, the spore conductor. And a level three head which is the Arachnidar Clause. So it's a very big one. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these two behind now. So at this point, if you if you were this robot, you have two level threes. You got the Gem Blaster Con and you've got the Arachnidar Clause, you're in pretty good shape. Um, but when you attack, you only attack from one limb. So you don't necessarily need to have your whole robot built up really strong. Um, in fact, it's probably beneficial to pick one part of the robot and focus on it and try to use that to win the game. Um, but your robots can be, look really cool after the game goes on. You might have a giant robot with a lot of different parts. Okay. So in addition to all those things, you also might have hangers. Hangers give you, um, uh, spaces for crew members, um, and things like that as you build up. So they're important for the game and you can definitely win without hangers. You can actually win without armor as well. You can find ways to win uh, with a, a lot of different types of strategies, depending on what you've drafted in your deck and kind of one, what comes up during the game. And I've seen games won with and without all of these cut times of types of cards. So just because they exist doesn't mean you necessarily need them to win. Um, but hangers allow you to play crew members. Now you always can have one skill, one crew member, um, but unlike armor, so armors stack, um, and so do uh, anything with a level, like hangers also stack on top of each other, um, but crew members play side by side. Um, so you have to have enough space. You'll see the hanger, this one, the ketchup hanger has two spots, and um, the and so soda fats can sit in one of those two spots, but now you only have one spot left. And once you have a skill one, you could have a skill two. And so we'll put Tormax in there. Um, and he re-rolls all your twos. So it makes all your dice a little bit better. If all your twos are turning into something else, um, hopefully you would roll higher over time. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, skill threes are even more powerful to give boost to your robot or different kinds of effects. So every crew member is different just like every armor is different. And so finding little combos and things you can do with your um, robot and your your build is super important. Um, you can be really um, focused on attack or defense or manipulating dice or you know other ki kinds of combos. So those are just two examples of crew members, but there's so many more, which you definitely should check out on the website if you get a chance. Okay, so... So a lot of times this is what a board state might look like on your end of the table. So on the other side, they would obviously have their build, but you might have a hanger and some crew members and different things like that. Um, 
One other thing that you could have is action cards, which are very powerful and very important. Probably one of the most strategic um, things in the game is knowing what um, action cards to use and when to use them. So for instance, you've got Epical Beam here. It rolls a 20-sided die. So you can imagine if your opponent is only rolling one, two, or three dice for defense, and you're rolling a 20-sided die, you might be able to you know, really do a lot of damage. Um, and every single action, also different. So there's no duplication of any card in the, in the set. So you have to be very careful about um, when to use these cards and try to use them at, their, at the best possible time. And one other thing, so I'll talk quickly about um, just one other thing that's kind of really fun. So you might be almost dead. Let's say you lost your head and your arm and your feet. Um, and you're in a critical mode, um, which means that you only have one limb left. So it's like at the end of the game. Your pilot will now go into a critical form. You can see it up in the corner there. So that critical form allows you to get a boost. So this, her boost um, is plus two attack. So now all of a sudden, you can see that little blue box pops up and says, when I am down to one limb, I get angry. And so Mercy gets angry, two extra attack, and maybe that will turn the tide in the game for you to be able to um, blow up your opponent's robot. It's very important to think about that when you go, hello, Hillary. How's it going? Um, welcome, welcome. So that critical form is something you really want to be strategizing about because each pilot is very different. So for instance, Mercy does not get any uh, defense boost when she's in critical. So if you are down to one limb, you have to have a plan for trying to keep that limb alive. Now, when it comes to um, how gameplay works when you're playing PBL robots and attacking and stuff like that, I just wanted to talk about that quickly because it is super important um, for the game. Um, the attack is very similar to risk in, in the way that what you're doing is you're rolling dice um, and the highest number um, wins, but every card in your hand, um, they could always be played for face value as you see all the cards on the screen right now. You're playing them down on the board and then they they act as their face value. But you can also discard the cards in your hand face down into your deck and you actually get um, to roll an extra dice for that. You're like buying a dice with that card. So like Epico Beam, obviously if you play it down, you get to roll a 20-sided attack or defense. But let's say you had Soda Fats and you didn't have any room in your hangar. You could always play him down as a bomb or a shield, depending on if you're attacking or defending, and you get to roll dice. So every card in your hand is worth, is you're constantly deciding if you want to play it for its face value or for a bomb or a shield to try to take advantage in, in, a, in a battle. So... You get to build robots. You get to um, build a whole team. Uh, you know, it's really fun to when you do the draft to kind of pick and choose the parts and cards that you really like and find certain combos. I'd say that that's probably one of the best parts of the game is when you're first learning it is just trying to figure out which cards kind of work really well together. You know, some are you know manipulating dice. Some are finding ways to get cards out quicker and things like that. Let's see, uh, Josh who has comes up with a lot of really good ideas, says, I know it isn't what the game is about, but a limited run of 3D printed miniatures of the robots and upgrades that are interchangeable so you could swap limbs as you play with corresponding cards. That would be amazing. Yeah, I would love that. Um, I have actually looked into a little bit of that, and I personally would just love to have those. Um, if we ever get to the point where we, you know, have kind of an abundance of resources to make some of those, I would love that. That'd be so cool. And uh, my friend Dorianne also mentioned uh, making like uh, enamel pins that have all the different armors. So you actually get, you get a base robot and you can actually have different enamel pins to build your, your custom robot. Um, all those things, if I was able to raise another big batch of money um, for something like that, I would, I would love to do it. So if we can get support for that, I would love that. Um, and, and for those that don't know, we did, we ran a successful Kickstarter campaign to get the game launched. So that was really a, you know, 2015 was an exciting and exhausting year um, as we kind of built this, um, you know, our first time running through trying to build a game and it was absolute blast, um, but it was exhausting for sure. Um, and then uh, 
Adam says, uh, oh man, robot minis would be awesome. I agree. String, um, Karingas for the win. Yeah, Karingas the synthesizer. He turns all your ones into threes. So um, for people that roll really badly like myself, he's one of my favorite cards in the game. Because if you... Uh, if you're stuck rolling badly all the time, man, it really hurts. And it's really hard to, you know, survive games if you roll badly. But if you have Karingas, it makes a big difference. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, a little bit of what comes in the game. Let me also put up, I'm going to put up the code for uh, a coupon code. So if you're interested, uh, you can buy the game at robotcardgame.com. And I'll give a $5 code. I'm just going to put it up... Uh, just put it up in text here. Here we go. Coupon code. There we go. Let me see, get it into the right uh, font so that this can be used on the website. Um, it'll save you $5 if you uh, order a game. Um, and oops. Let me, why can't I move the text? I don't know. It doesn't want me to move it. There you go. I'll blow it up here. Coupon code. Woo. Yep. So check it out. So I'd love for you to pick it up. Um, also, we have a really cool qu frequently asked questions on our on our website as well. Really fun thing to read about. Um, I have had some people say they went on there when they bought the game and just started reading through it because what they learned was a bunch of like, you know, unique combos and stuff. You're actually learning what people are asking after they play five, 10 games. And it kind of gets you up to speed really quickly. And you can find some kind of combos and interesting uh, ways cards work um, by reading that. So it's a great resource. Um, also, the me anytime you message anyone on there, you get either me or Silas um, personally. So the two creators of the game is who you get to chat with if you leave comments or uh, send, you know, send comments on that. So that's really cool. Um, and we love to hear, you know, who's playing and, and where. Um, we do have a way to play it online, um, which anybody's welcome to, if you own a game, then you get, you get free access to it. Um, however, it's on an old system. It's like a sandbox uh, system. Um, Vassal, it's called Vassal Engine. Um, so it's not it's not high high tech or anything. It's a pretty low tech. You're really just playing it as if you would on a tabletop, but just you know in digital form. And so you have to you know be connected to somebody. We did a tournament actually this way. Um, Abbott Russell won. She's one of our champions. Um, um, she's actually the current uh, leading for the most amount of champions in PBO Robots. Um, and so. Yeah, so that that's there is a way to play it online, and it is a really fun way um, to engage with the game. Um, but also a challenge, just because you, it's harder to read the cards. So if if that is a um, you know if playing online isn't something, it's a little finicky as far as like you don't know the cards and you have to zoom in a, a lot to read all the cards. But as you get used to it, and if you've played a bunch of times, um, it becomes really easy to play um, online. So. And we, we will be doing another, especially if the pandemic keeps going the way it's going, we'll, we'll be doing a winter tournament for sure. Because normally we'd be in SnowCon right now. I'd probably be playing uh, with um, String Cheese Riot right now, battling them in, uh, snow, in Bangor, Maine. Um, hello, Scott and Michelle and David and Theodore and Jasper. The Hessians are in the house. All right. Um, Kind of shout out to Scott. He was what, the one that actually came up with the idea of having the um, this control panel when we were making the game. And it's kind of like a way to keep track of your uh, attack, keeps track of your all the things kind of like as you're learning the game. This uh, is a really good tool because you can keep track of like who's up in, in attack and defense. And it gives you an idea of all the symbols, what they mean, um, because there's storage bombs, there's epico beams. You know, there's uh, blast effects, there's unite and pick, and yeah, just a lot to keep track of. <clears throat> and, and as far as like, even even just what you can and can't do on your turns, um, this kind of uh, 
yeah, this kind of sh shares, gives you like a key thing. And, and, and in some ways it's simple, but also it's very complex when you're first playing and you got a whole handful of cards and you're trying to figure out what to do. Um, and and the, the key thing is you make one move. You either build something or you attack. And building something means you're playing a card from your hand onto the table um, and increasing what you have. So it's armor, a crew, or hanger or something. And then otherwise you're attacking. And those are the only two things you can really do in a turn. Um, but deciding which one of those things to do each turn can be pretty tricky. And then you can always play actions um, and then you pass your turn. And the one thing I haven't explained is there are expert pilots, which I'm going to shout out now. Um, so I showed you Mercy, the starting pilot, but if you get too late in the game, you can also get these expert pilots. And expert pilots have really powerful stats, um, but they have, they're hard to get into the game. So for instance, um, Shiro, who's, uh, the best, um, expert pilot, five attack, two defense, uh, simply the best is his motto. And basically when he comes in, um, it's, it's pretty serious. Um, but you, you need 10 pilot points to be able to play him. And pilot points are built up over the game. It's everything attached to your robot. So each one of those armors I showed you, you know, for Arachnodar Claws, there was, you know, a, a level one, a level two, and a level three. So that's three pilot points. And Gem Blastercon, there's, you know, the one, two, and three there. So now you're up to six. So you still need four more pilot points to be able to get Shiro out. Um, sometimes you'll see a player, uh, you know, building up all kinds of armor and you're wondering what they're doing. And then you realize, oh, I see, they're trying to get to 10 because they got Shiro. And then once he comes in, you're in some trouble. So pretty cool. It's a, a neat effect to have that. And sometimes people will put in these expert pilots when you're not expecting them and change the game dramatically. So, and those, and those you're drafting um, as you go. Oh, the shipping's not available. Uh, Megan, if you, um, I will definitely ship to you. Um, I think it's just because it doesn't know how to calculate it. So let me know. Um, we'll talk. I'll send you a message on uh, Patreon. That'd be awesome. Um, again, at the end of this, so we're thir thir half of the way through, but at the end of this, I will be giving out one of the foil um, base robots. And nobody has, so there's a lot of collectible um, base robots. There's like one of a pinball machine and there's a bunch of different ones that we've given out. We had some Valentine's ones. Um, I know Adam Foss has a couple of different ones. He even has a, a custom one with his name written on it. There's one of ones that are made for champions. Um, and also, so this is the first time we've ever done foil. Um, so that's pretty cool to get, um, to be finally releasing some foil ones. Um, but there are a bunch of different ones to collect. So this is a pretty cool collector's piece, especially for those of you that um, collect the different ones. Um, there was a Boston Fig one. When we do conventions, we try to have some specialty ones to collect. So um, we did a big, last year, I actually just had a thing remind me, last year, almost exactly this time, um, or a little, maybe even a little bit before this, but we had a big show at the Mechanics uh, Hall. It was uh, the... Uh, Main Craft of Portland is the name of the store, and we had a display. It featured all of the, or a bunch of the original art from PBL robots, had a display of like all the different uh, robots that we've um, offered over the time, over time, and kind of, and we had our, the game for sale. It was a real blast. It was really fun. We did a big tournament in there and everything. It was great. Um, so, I'm gonna get rid of all the armor because I'm, I, I kind of want to do the same kind of demo again here at the end just kind of building it up kind of for fun so I'm going to take everything away also I want to do a little unboxing of the actual um, game so I'm going to do the unboxing now and then we'll kind of go through everything again um, oops where is our base robot oh there we'll pick a different armor or a different base robot next time okay yeah, and, and everybody, if to enter into the foil base robot contest, all you have to do is leave a chat in the stream chat. And if you leave a chat, then you are entered. And if and let me know if there's more than one person, uh, you know, there. For instance, I know uh, the Hessians is a group of um, my family and stuff, so that's uh, you all count as being in the, in the uh, contest. So I'll make a list um, at the end with uh, about 10 minutes left to go. So you got about, you know, any get anybody else in here that you think might want to win that too, to up the chances of trying to get one of those. So 
Hey, Sarah. Hello, hello. Hello from upstairs. Um, Sarah's a good PBL Robots player as well. Um, let me just... Okay, so what comes in a box of PBL Robots? This is what you would get if you buy one, um, which, again, they are available at robotcardgame.com, and that is the uh, code. Um, but So you get the box. This is what it looks like. And you get the three base robots. Uh, these are the obviously these ones are the foil ones, but you you would get one, each one of those in the regular form. You get a a, a nice rule book here, kind of explains um, all the rules and a couple different ways to play. You can play three player, um, and you can play um, a couple different ways. Um, we have. There's also a memory version of the game that you can play kind of for, for younger kids to figure out how to build um, the robot. Um, it, it's mainly a faster version, and it's really just a good way to get used to a lot of the cards. And it's actually just really a fun, you know, a kind of a fun, more randomized uh, game, kind of more of a roll of the dice. Um, then you get the uh, control panels. You know, extremely important for the beginning of a game. And with your first couple games, you'll definitely want to use that. Um, then you get your pack of mini dice, red and blue attack and uh, defense dice. The mini dice are really cute, they're really fun. And you've also got uh, your 20-sided epico beam die, which is used in a bunch of different things. And that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the 20-sided die, it's kind of a tradition in PBL Robots, to use the epico beam for contests. So everybody in the, in the, th in the chat, I'm going to be rolling the 20-sided die um, so you guys can see... Um, who wins the 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 foil robot? So it's the whoever rolls the highest on the twenty sided die will win. And um, if it's a tie, we do a reroll with the the highest ones. Okay, then you got your ten pilots. So right now I've only showed you Mercy Dufresne. Um, I'm gonna give you a little display of all the robot or all the pilots. So you got these are just the starter pilots, not the experts. But you got Unico Hemingway. Lives on the moon. He's a very aggressive pilot. That's probably the one that I, if I play against Unico, I'm, I'm the most upset because he's just so aggressive. Kenny Jackson, very defensive. He's got a great critical. And you've got Mercy Dufresne, who I already talked about. She gets angry when she gets into critical. Sister Sibergale, no one knows if uh, she's a human or a cyborg. And she, and she has rights, you know, she, you can't, you don't get to know. That's her, that's her own decision to tell you. Uh, Serendipity, um, kind of very, um, unusual pilot in the way that she's very unassuming, but she's quite good. And she's kind of one of those pi pilots that are often overlooked and she's got a lot of like kind of hidden, uh, value. Smillion, who has Bruno the cat as a sidekick. And if you can find Bruno the cat during the game, you get a pretty big bonus. So one of the things that a lot of people do, if you if you get Smillion as your pilot, you want to look for that cat because um, it really does make a big difference. Brobad X. So one of the most popular pilots, mainly because when he goes into critical, he draws two cards. And there's ways to regenerate your limbs. So you could go into critical, draw two cards, go out of critical, go into critical, draw two cards. That's actually one of my favorite things to do is use Brobad with that uh, critical over and over. Red, who's a very popular robot or a pilot. Look at when he goes into critical, his beard actually goes blonde. He's like a almost like a Super Saiyan. Um, in as he like ages reverse, and his critical is a twenty sided die for an attack. So he can do a lot of damage at the end of the game. D Rock Kingston, um, he changes uh, his outfit when he gets uh, into critical. So no bonus, but he's the only one with a starter bonus. You actually get an extra card to begin the game. So you can get off to a very good start with him, but he doesn't do anything when he goes into critical. And, you know, so you have to be ready for that. And then Robbie Seeliger, um, I love his quote. Um, He's actually extremely fast, but as Robbie says, good cowboys always let the other guys shoot first. So you see his speed is really low. Um, so he, he always goes uh, last no matter what. And the speed, all that determines is which pilot goes first. And his critical bonus is a 20-sided die roll. So those are all that. And then you've got your deck of cards here. It's got all the armors. 
Um, and you've got all the crew members, 100 different cards, um, lots of variants. You can play this game, you know, thousands of times and never end up with the same deck and have different strategies throughout. Um, there's probably like 20 so different like core strategies that you can use. Um, and, and when I say core strategies, I kind of mean like, Obviously, you can go crew, you can go armor, you can go attack, defense, all these different things. But there's combos within all of that um, that you can use. And and it's kind of like very interesting to see which... It only takes one or two cards that combo well together, and you can start developing a strategy around it. Um, so I won't open up all of those because you can see all the cards on robotcardgame.com. There's a card gallery. You can uh, scroll through and see them all. So... That is all available, and definitely check that out. Okay, we got a couple comments. Um, it's excellent, we are excited. Um, for those who wish to improve their copy of PBL Robots, I personally replaced the die with the Chessex Red and Blue six-sided dice, which I I have to say that's my favorite uh, set to use is Adam uh, String Cheese Riot's um, attack and defense dice. They're so they're like perfect. They're like made. They're just the perfect dice. So I would totally agree with that. 100%. Um, yeah, so that was fun to go through the boxing, um, unboxing of that. Oh, also at the back sides of all these uh, pilots is your blow offs. So these are the things you lay. Let's say you blow up your opponent's arm. Those are the things you lay on there. And that that's like every robot has four life points, essentially. It's a head, arm arm and legs and once all four of those life points are gone the game's over so that and you can you can technically do it in like three turns um if you get really lucky but it's pretty hard and almost never has happened but um it, it is possible um but most of the time games take anywhere from th uh 30 minutes to an hour and a half and it depends the the more games you play the quicker they go um and it depends a lot on style you know, if you draft a deck that's really slow and really defensive, um, the game's probably going to take a little while, especially if your opponent also drafts a deck that's like that um, and how aggressive the players are. Um, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, I made up a little sign. I also did Twitch 5, save 5 bucks. Cute, huh? And then I was like, wait a minute, I should just write it right on the screen. You know, still... still uh, Still such a Twitch like uh, newbie when it comes to using the tools that are available to me here. Um, so Dorian also offered to potentially play a game over um, Twitch at some point. So we put tabletop game, and I think that that would be really fun to play. We'll each like have our own decks on the, on each side and maybe try to battle each other. So we're gonna try to set that up for a future PBL Robots uh, board game kind of uh, battle. And anybody that that is interested in watching that, definitely make sure to follow the stream, or follow the Twitch um, to be aware of that. And maybe there's other people like uh, String Cheese Riot that would want to battle over over uh, stream at some point because. Um, it's a little bit weird because you can't do the draft the same way and you can have duplicate cards, which when you play PBL robots, you never have any, like, I can't have a Shiro if you have a Shiro because there's only one card in the game. So normally you would never have two. Um, our game is not a collectible card game. It doesn't have expansion packs in the way that like you would, it's more of a living card game. And what that means is you have your deck and you can play with it over and over. So one, one pack you play with somebody else. No, they don't have to buy another uh, another game. And if you play tournament style, if two, four people want to play at the same time, you know, one versus one and one versus one, you obviously need another deck for them to play. But one deck, one game um, is enough for for you to play with another person infinitely, really. Um, and we've considered. Um, putting out expansion packs that you can add and make your decks bigger or your uh, pack bigger so you can like have even more options. But as of right now, we're really still focused on this version uh, because it's a great tournament game and we haven't really felt that we needed to necessarily expand it yet, um, but we're always ready and we're always taking um, input and feedback and ideas from everybody um, to kind of add to our uh, list of cards that we'd like to make in the future. Hey, okay, no problem, String Cheese Riot. Your uh, phone is at 3%. Hey, this is going to be a YouTube video as well, so definitely check that out. I'll be publishing it there um, in the next day or two. And also, it will be available. You can go back and watch this on Twitch uh, later, so you can you can see the replay of it. Um, 
later on. So, but you're still in the contest. Maybe you will win, and I'll let you know if you do win the um, the contest. And again, even if you um, join this contest and you uh, try to get the foil cut robot, um, if you also leave a comment on the YouTube video, you will also be um, entered into that one. So you could even win two p p potentially. Yeah, booster packs would be amazing to be able to add to your collection. Also, to be able to do things like foil robots and do a lot of like a lot of specialty giveaway ones um foil cards and you know ex uh specialty ones and it's something that is possible um and and especially trying to figure out how to release we do have a ton of expansion cards that we would love to release eventually we're just not really sure how we're going to do it yet and also like you know we're still really focused on making sure people can learn the game and adding new cards when people still, you know, there's only, you know, so many people that could play at a level to be in a tournament. And that's really where the game shines the best is as a tournament game is really like playing it competitively. Um, okay, so we'll do one more, um, one more demo with the cards and then we'll do the giveaway. Um, and remember right after this, um, at eight o'clock uh, my time, so in 15 minutes, I'm gonna switch over to doing the art re art print reveal. So for my pat patrons and my Patreon um, and just my art um, career um, stuff, that's what the second part of this uh, stream will be. Okay, um, but just letting you know that in 15 minutes, then I jump over to that. But if you like the PBL the PBL robots content and you're more and you're interested in the game and want to learn more, I am gonna be doing some more stuff with it as we go. And I would like to get uh, John Sapinski on here to, um, you know, do some demo and discussion, uh, kind of talking about the lore of the game. There's so much cool sci-fi um, history about what these characters, you know, where they come from and why why they exist and how the league even started. We have some really cool backstory stuff that's uh, it's always fun to talk about um, for people that like the game. Okay, so let's say we pick out a different base armor oh, not that one let's do what did we do last let's do obsidian this time so obsidian is one of the other armors you can select put it above there and I only have mercy um, loaded up here um, I didn't want to load up all the cards just because it really slows down some of it so that's why I only have a few but I also knew I was gonna be able to uh, have the real set. So check it out one more time. This is one of the funnest things when you when you first learn the game is just kind of like how the cards kind of interact. You've got the base robot with the, with your uh, cockpit um, a hole there, and then you get to put your pilot underneath and just kind of like really get used to like sitting your pilot in there. And then one of the things it's just so fun. Each character um, once you're playing, sometimes you forget what character you've got in your in your. Uh, you know, in your robot, um, and each one has some different special effects and, and things that you can do and combos that you can do with their abilities uh, and stuff like that. So it's it's always fun to think about the strategy. Okay, so let's say we do head armor to start this time. We got the Trinidad Mung Mitt. You'll notice that uh, Maxine Trinidad is one of the all-stars of the game. She's actually can be a crew member and a pilot at the same time. So, um, and she can actually even work for multiple teams at the same time. She's just like a, a savant when it comes to building robots. And so she can kind of do it all. Um, and she's got a huge backstory. She's, um, you know, she comes from a long line of the best PBL robots players and, and mechanics in, in the league. And Jurgis Trinidad was a famous pilot. And she's the son or the daughter of, of Jurgis. Doc Trinidad, who comes up a lot in the cards, and he famously went missing. So there's all kinds of uh, theories of what, where he, he went. So let's say you play that on your first turn. You got your Trinidad Mugmit, makes your head more safe, and gives you an extra attack. So it's pretty good. Um, let's say then you put on your Swan's Beak. The cool thing about Swan's Beak is that as you roll, you get two attack dice, but that's your max. You can't get more than two attack dice. Um, so you don't get any other bonuses. Um, Let's and and but if you roll those two dice and they happen to be doubles, you get to roll again and roll again um, every time you roll doubles. So it actually has a really high ceiling as far as like what you can roll. We've seen it go off, you know, in ways where like somebody rolls like nine doubles in a row and it's like a hundred that points, you know, just like 
unreal stuff. Um, and I know Patrick Russell, one of our champions, he, he did it recently where it went off so many times on sixes too. He was doubling on sixes. Just incredible. Um, and then sometimes it, you roll a one and a two and it's just, you know, it's just terrible. So you just never know, which I, I really enjoy that one. Um, okay. So armor number two. So let's say you upgrade this one. Let's say Swan's Beak isn't working out for you. Um, and you want to go to multi firearm. Um, so that one is a much more um, aggressive arm. You got five attack and it's got such good defense. So people really like this one because it works in both defensive strategies and offensive. You get to roll a ton of dice, which is really fun. Um, but sixes and fives don't count. So, but it makes, it really does keep that arm safe for you. So pretty cool. Um, and then, and again, these are just, I'm just featuring these specific armors just because um, these are the ones that I decided to pick out, but there's so many different ones. You have, tr you have like, these trees where you get, there's also construction pods, which are like wild cards and you can put them anywhere on your robot and it helps you get from level one to two to three and you want to get as high as you can, but you have to be able to protect it. Otherwise it doesn't do much good. All right, let's go to a level two head now. Spore conductor. And the cool thing about Spore Conductor is that it actually um, gets stronger as it gets attacked. So you kind of want people to attack this one um, because it gets bigger and bigger, as long as you don't let it blow off. Because if it gets attacked and gets blown up, it doesn't do any good. But if you can protect it, you know, burn some of your cards in your hand and keep it alive, it gets stronger and stronger as you go. Okay, now let's go. let's go to the... Armor three for the arm, and you've got your gem blaster con. And again, that one is a six attack. Um, so you you feel like you can definitely just mow anything down with it. It's just so powerful, but um, it only goes so far because every time it attacks, it gets weaker and weaker. And at some point, it becomes worse than um, your base because it can go all the way down to a zero attack. It could be a zero one and it does nothing in attack. So you have to be really careful about timing that and use it to the best of your ability. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, Josh said booster packs would be cool, but the self-contained aspect is smart. Yeah, because you know one thing with so many games are so expensive, um, especially when you need to keep buying into it or like a pay to play thing. So we really we made a really conscious effort to make sure that if somebody buys this game, they can play it and it's all inclusive and play it many times over because the variations on what cards you can get um, and in the draft and stuff like that, it changes so, so much and the different types of pilots and stuff. So the combinations are, are a lot and there's really fun ways to you know learn about all the cards. Um, we still have other things that we, we had a lot of good ideas that we decided to wait on because we thought this core 100 card set was going to be the best way to learn this game. And and so we put a ton into it, but we also took some stuff out to make sure that we that it was easy to learn some of the core mechanics. Um, and I'll say it's still a challenge to learn. There's so much to it. Um, so we, even though we took out a lot of cards um, and ideas, it was because we wanted to make sure that, because there was so much complexity already in the game. So it, it is a game that people that really like to get really involved with it that's the kind of game for you. If you're kind of a more casual player, um, it can be a little bit of a difficult game to jump into because it's there's a ton of rules. Every card has some text on it that's important to remember and stuff like that. So, okay, let's get our let's get our uh, head armor level three back to the Arachnidar claws. So Arachnidar claws, it's very powerful. Um, it's a pretty fun one to get out and it does a ton, a ton of damage. Um, a lot of people, because it only has the one defense, when you get it out, people are going to be gunning for it right away. So you have to be ready to protect it kind of, you know, that's true about any armor really, but, um, definitely true about Arachnid Arclaws. Pretty cool. And it has an ultimate attack, which means you can blow up your head back down to the base armor. So you'd be back down to your zero, zero base armor, but you get to do eight dice rolls for it. So it's super powerful. Um, timing, it's very important though, because if your opponent has a action card that gives them a bunch of defense or a misfire, 
and you you blow up your head and, and that could be your best attack that you just kind of lost so always really important to think about that um it's so fun to just build your robots by the way you know i didn't even upload all the rest of the um the different types so we haven't even seen any of the right arms and or any of the feet and the feet have some cool ones there's also shoulder armors that do some neat things and a bazooka cannon a yahtzee bazooka um all kinds of stuff like that that um add a whole bunch of variants to to the game um all right so got those let me put up the uh the crew members again again you can have one crew member anytime as long as long as it's a skill one um as a sidekick and you don't even need a hanger for that so you could have that anytime so there's soda fats um soda fats is one of the most powerful um just because if you can build a strategy with him it draws you a ton of cards and remember that each card in your hand is worth an extra die roll so it can kind of get you through um a lot of defense or attack um so he's a really good one he loves to party hot dogs for life um a really fun character um it, it is important to if you get him to really draft a whole st uh, strategy around him he's one of the um one of the characters that that's important for. Oh, also in the game, it's uh, if you run out of cards, the deck shuffles and you and you go back through your cards. So if you um, you don't want to be too worried about like using one of your best cards. For instance, Arachnidar Claws, you might not be able to get to a level three for a while. So you could use that as a bomb or a shield, and you still might get to it later in the game. Um, so to, let's put out. Uh, so you can't play Tormax yet because you don't have a, any other um, space. But if we have our hanger. Ketchup hanger. Where is it? There it is. If you have that, now all of a sudden you've got room for two. So Soda Fats immediately fills up one of those spots. You'd have a second one. You'd actually get a storage bomb that would fill that second one. So you'd have to use that first, but once you used it, then you have Tormax. And he comes out. And now all your twos that you roll are uh, re-rolled. So that could be really powerful in certain scenarios. So there's your crew. And there's also, you know, level two and three uh, hangers. So building up your hangers is also something you have to think a lot about when you're playing the game. And and it's so important. While you're building crew and doing hangers, your opponent might be attacking you trying to blow up your robot. So you have to be ready. You know, you have to be ready for anything. And um, it all depends on who your opponent is and, and what build they have. So be ready for that. So it's a really fun game, I'd say. Um, it's an excellent pandemic game because you could, uh, you know, if you have somebody that you that is a, also a gamer and you like to play competitive games, um, it's a pretty fun one uh, to be able to do. And you can kind of play it on any surface, really. You do need a little bit of space but and room to roll dice, but other than that, you kind of can play it anywhere. All right, I think we're ready for our giveaway. So we're going to do Epico Beams for everybody. And... Uh, everybody that's in chat, if you are in watching right now, if you're one of the watchers um, and you're and you're kind of lurking, make sure you leave a chat right now because then you'll be entered to win one of the, um, you know, exclusive rare um, robots here. Something that you know some of the players collect the different base robots so you can uh, do some trading with them if uh, if you're new to the game. So we got Megan. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. We got Josh. I'm trying to use, I should probably use everybody Twitch, Twitch's names so that, uh, yeah, double Megs. Just so people see what names are actually in here. And if you want to chat with people, you know who I'm talking about here. So Twitch, it's Squatch Trike. It's Josh there. And we got Adam, String Cheese Riot. And we've got um, Hillary 10. And we've got, what's we got? We got, okay, the Hessians. We've got Scott and Michelle. And we've got David. And we've got, and I'm gonna put all your emotes up here in a second once we get to the second half of the stream. So be ready for that one. We got Teddy. We got Jasper. How else do we got? And we got Sarah upstairs. Um, hey, Chris, good timing. Welcome, welcome. So, 
So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hey, Tyler, what's up? Good timing. Oops, I'm trying to do people's. I keep forgetting to use everybody's names. So jungle, Tyler, welcome. So you're you're entered into the contest. So again, the winner of this roll off is going to be able to choose their favorite of these three first ever foil base robots. They're pretty sweet. So the I, I will say that the obsidian is the only one that it's got it's just the register was a little off, so it's a little high on the card. But the other two um, look really sweet. So and and actually it's still I still really like it. Um, it's just a little high on the card, um, but pretty sweet. There's only, right now, there's only one of each of these in the world, so they're you know very rare. Um, but I, I do want to make a couple other ones for give out giveaways and stuff in the future. So they won't be the only ones, but I will be using different types of foil um, for them. Uh, but they're pretty. They're kind of. They're, you just can't tell on the stream, but they're really blinged out. They look so cool, um, especially this type of foil here. You can kind of see it when I do it this way. I feel bad that you can't really get the effect, uh, but when you get these in hand, they're very cool. They have a lot of a lot of glit, glitz and glamour. Um, oh, buffering issues again? Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, maybe if it's, I'm gonna, I'll probably take down. Let me take down some of the extra cards. Maybe that will help. Um, but so the the common way that we do prize giveouts, we do this at conventions when we go to you know any of the the big conventions in Boston or uh, you know can any gaming conventions. We always try to do the 20 sided die roll um, because it's really fun way to, uh, it's, it's the epical beam from the game. So what I'm gonna do is get the 20 sided die, pull it out, and then I'll do it on the inside of the, uh, we'll do it on the inside of here. And the highest one will win. So I'm going to do it on the inside. Wow, it says 106. They must keep a number. I don't know. I've never seen that. Okay, so inside here is the, going to be the uh, the roll-off. Um, hopefully it's not too bad on the delay. Uh, and we'll see who wins it. So wait, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we'll see whoever's the highest will hold um, will win the card. And ties will go to, you know, the, whoever ties will get a roll-off. Um, so we're going to start... Let's just start right at the top. So Megan, you are first ready to go. Um, here we go. Epical beam roll off. Seven. Okay, so I'm gonna write that. Just don't forget. So we got seven. Seven's the number to beat. Let's see what uh, Squatch Troy can do here. 15, current lead. Sorry, Megan. All right, let's see if uh, one of our champions, Adam, Adam String Cheese Riot can win it. Uh, it's a sideways roll. Let's see if I can get it. It's hard, really hard to get it to land, especially it being a 20 sided. 15, a tie. Oh, so Josh and String Cheese Riot tied up. Okay, Hillary 10. Uh, 15, three way tie. And Scott's up. Eight. Okay. Michelle. Nineteen. Taking the lead. That's gonna be tough to beat. Knocks off Hillary. String cheese riot and squash strike. Okay, David, can you beat can you beat your mom? Oh, reroll. Three. Nope. Can Teddy take down Michelle? Eighteen. So close. Didn't do it though. Almost. Jasper, can you get it? Nineteen or twenty? 17, Jasper couldn't do it. All right, down to Sarah. Sarah's upstairs, what can we do? 14, almost. And we got Chris Majambo. Roland needs me to get a 19 or higher. It's pretty tough on a 20. Oh, an eight. That it was 20 was right next to it. Okay, up to Tyler, final roll. Five. So Michelle with the big win, congrats. You're gonna get one of your your choice of the foil robots, specialty cards. Um, 
can make your pick. So it's crystal, solar, or obsidian. And again, the obsidian's the one that's kind of a little bit off center, a little um, top justified. Um, so that one's just slightly weird. But these uh, these two are look great. And again, I'm gonna post this up on on YouTube. Um, you can just find it under my uh, YouTube channel, William Hessian. Um, and if you leave a comment. Um, you can leave any comment you want on it, and you'll be able to enter for the uh, remaining two. Yeah, Josh, you've been you've been really lucky on the rolls, but you, yep, ended up being Michelle as the victor. So, okay, I'm gonna start uh, taking this stuff down, and I'm gonna start transitioning into the art print uh, reveal for the Patreon. I'm gonna stop this one. Um, so, thank you for watching and being a part of the PBL Robots game demo. Game demo. Um, please let me know if you want to see more of this kind of content for PBL Robots or what you would like to see. You would would you like to see a real game? Would you like to see gameplay like that? Would you like to hear more about the lore? Um, what kind of things would you like? Do you like the giveaways? Should we be doing more giveaways? Um, do you like to see the cards up on the screen? Uh, let me know what you would like to see as far as PBL robots and that kind of content. Um, is it something where you want to learn more about the game um, or, or that kind of thing? Because we really can have a lot of freedom here. But please let me know how you would like to learn more about the game. Um, and don't forget that you can pick up a copy, robotcardgame.com. C coupon code five dollars off if you use Twitch Five, um, and thank you for that one. Appreciate it.